close your eyes and focus on your breath. And stick with the breath. Try to be committed to the breath. As the Buddha said, this is his teachings, you're committed to heightening the mind. In other words, you lift the mind up above its ordinary concerns. You try to bring it to a place of stillness, a sense of well-being inside. And from there, you can look at your life and see it a lot more clearly. Otherwise, we're all tied up in our loves and our hates. We go for things because we love them, we run away from things that we hate. And then we find all the things we loved and we don't really love anymore, and you run away from those. And it goes back and forth like this. You can't take anything, any, find any real substance out of your, your loves and hates. What you can find substance out of, though, is when the mind is still and it can see things as to whether they're skillful or not. And you actually act on your realization, okay, you don't want to do anything that leads to long-term harm. And you want to do things that would lead to long-term happiness. You want to hold to that desire. And that means you also want to desire other people's long-term happiness, too. Because if your happiness depends on other people's suffering, it's not going to last. There's a passage in the Pali Canon where King Basenity is in his upper apartments with his queen, Malika. And in a tender moment, he turns to her and says, Is there anyone you love more than yourself? Of course, being a king, he expects her to say, Yes, Your Majesty, you. But she's no dummy. She says, No, it's not the truth. I don't, I don't see anybody I love more than I love myself. And how about you? Is there anyone you love more than yourself? When the king is put on the spot like that, he has to answer. Honestly, well, no, I guess there's not. That's the end of that scene. And so the king leaves the palace, goes to see the Buddha, and reports the conversation. The Buddha said, what the queen says is right. You could search the whole world over and not find anyone you love more than yourself. In the same way, everyone else loves themselves very fiercely, too. But instead of recommending that everybody just try to run after their own happiness and forget about other people, he says, when you realize the truth of this, that everyone loves themselves fiercely, that you shouldn't harm anybody. This is for two reasons. One is you see their, their mind is like your mind. And if you were to create their unhappiness, what, what would be fair about that? And secondly, of course, is if your happiness depends on their suffering, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to try to destroy it, which means that you can't base a long-term happiness on anything that would harm anyone else. If you want true happiness, you have to look inside. This is why we train the mind. And we train the mind also to be very careful in our actions with others. This is why we have the precept every week to remind you that you don't want to harm anybody in any way, because if you harm others, you're harming yourself. So you want to find something really reliable in life. You have to make yourself reliable in your commitment to the higher mind, heightened mind, the mind that's above the ordinary likes and dislikes of the world. It can see things with more compassion, with more equanimity. Compassion for yourself, compassion for others, equanimity over the fact that there are some things we just can't change in life. Things you can't let get yourself get worked up about them. You have to focus your attention instead on the things you can change, which of course are here inside, primarily. And then any other good, event, good effect you could have on other people, well, you're happy to have that effect if you can. But again, it's up to their choice whether they want to pick up your recommendations or not. But if your happiness is based on something really solid inside like this, well, then you're not leaning too heavily on other people. And your relationships with other people go a lot more smoothly. Because when people lean on each other all the time, somebody slips and falls, and then people fall down in a row. It's like that image of the acrobats. If each acrobat maintains his or her sense of balance, that's also helping the other person maintain his or her sense of balance. So try to maintain your balance inside. Be committed to this heightened mind. And that's a kind of commitment you can stick with for your whole life and beyond. <laughs>